Hi everyone. In this video, I will show you how to install the Zabbix monitoring software on CentOS 7. This will be the first part of a series of Zabbix videos that I will release over the next couple of weeks. Zabbix is an extremely powerful monitoring system which can monitor just about anything. I use it daily to monitor multiple servers and websites. In this series, I will cover the installation, configuration and some of the main features found in Zabbix. Let's get started. It is best to have a dedicated server or VPS for your Zabbix installation. I am going to install Zabbix 3.0 on a CentOS 7 VPS. Of course the first step is to SSH into your server. There are three things which I always do on a new installation before installing anything else. The first is to run the update command to ensure that the kernel and other installed software is up to date. This requires a simple yum-y update. This will take some time depending on the number of updates required as well as your internet speed. I will skip ahead to where the updates are complete. Now that the updates are complete, we can disable SE Linux as well to avoid any issues later on. To disable this, edit the etc sysconfig SE Linux file and change the SE Linux equals enforcing value to SE Linux equal disabled. Once this is done, Save and exit the file, then reboot your server. Now that your server is rebooted, the last thing I like to install is the config server firewall or CSF. I love this powerful, easy to use firewall and use it 99% of the time. This step is optional, but if you would like to install it, you can see the tutorial on my website using the link on screen. You can of course simply use IP tables or firewall D or whichever other firewall you prefer. Let's move on to the actual Zabbix installation. First, we need to download and install the Zabbix repository. You can find the link in the description of this video. Remember, this is the Zabbix 3 repository for CentOS 7. We will use RPM to install the repository. Now we can install the required Zabbix package. We will use MySQL or MariaDB since we are on CentOS 7. So we are going to install Zabbix server with MySQL, the Zabbix web interface and finally the Zabbix client. To do so, run the following yum command. yum-y install Zabbix server MySQL, Zabbix web MySQL and Zabbix-agent. This will take a while, so I'll get back once it's installed. Now that Zabbix is installed, we need to install MySQL. On CentOS 7, MySQL is replaced by MariaDB, but we can still use the MySQL commands. To install however, we can specify MariaDB as follows. Once installed, start the MariaDB servers. On CentOS 7, this is done a bit differently using systemctl, but we can still use service MariaDB start as well. This command will just redirect to the systemctl start command as shown here. An important step after installing MySQL is to secure the installation. To do so, run the following command. User bin mysql underscore secure underscore installation. You will see a few prompts. The first one asks for the current mysql root password. We don't have one so you can just press enter. Next you will be asked if you would like to set the root password. We don't want to leave the root password blank so select yes and enter a strong password yeah. Remember, this is the MySQL root password, 
not the server root password. It is best not to make this password the same as your server root password. You can also answer yes to the next four questions, which is to remove anonymous users, disallow root login remotely, remove the test database, and reload the privilege tables. Once done, restart the MariaDB service. Finally, to ensure that the service starts at reboot, enter the following systemctl command. systemctl enable mariadb.service Before we can start the Zabbix installation, we have to create the database. I know that this is confusing because I mentioned MySQL as well as MariaDB, but for all intents and purposes, I will call it MySQL for the rest of this tutorial to avoid confusion since the commands and installation steps refer to it as such. First I'll clear my screen. Log into MySQL as root using the following command. MySQL space u and then root which is the user space minus p. You will be prompted for your MySQL root password that you just created. Enter this here. Once logged in, we can create the Zabbix database using the create command. It's create database Zabbix, character set UTF-8, collate, and UTF underscore bin. You can call the database something else as well, for example, ZabbixDB or even your name. It really doesn't matter. Next, we need to grant all privileges and assign a password to our new database. To do this, grant all privileges on Zabbix. This is the database. Dot star to Zabbix at localhost. Zabbix over here is your username. Identify it by, and then you enter your password here. I'm just going to leave it Zabbix for now, but you obviously need to enter something more secure. It will give you the query OK result if everything went well. Just a note, the password will be inside the apostrophes. For example, apostrophe, your password apostrophe. So don't remove the apostrophes. You can also use a different username other than Zabbix, which is more secure, for example, your name at localhost. That is all we need to do in the database, so type quit to exit. The next step is to import the database schema and data. So navigate to user share doc and then Zabbix dash server dash MySQL dash 3.0 whichever version that you're currently working with. In this case, it's .1. By the time you watch this tutorial, it might be 3.0.8, for example. So just keep that in mind, that the exact folder will change. Once you're in the correct folder, run the following import command. zcat create.sql.gz and pipe it to mysql dash u root dash p and then Zabbix. You will be prompted for your MySQL root password which you need to enter before the data will be imported. Once that is done, we can edit the Zabbix server configuration file which is located at etc zabbix zabbix underscore server dot conf. We'll look for four parameters here and set them according to the details you used when you created the Zabbix database. The first is the DB host. You can just uncomment the line so it's DB host equals localhost. Next we have the DB name here. This should already be uncommented. So enter the database name that you used when you created it earlier on. The third is the DB user. 
it should also be uncommented and it will be the MySQL Zabbix database user that you created earlier on. In my case, I just left it as Zabbix. Finally, we need to set the DB password. So uncomment that line and enter the password you used. Again, I used Zabbix as the password for this tutorial. Once you have changed all the parameters, you can save and exit the config file. Now start the Zabbix server process and as mentioned before, CentOS 7 uses systemctl so you can use either systemctl start zabbix server or you can just use service zabbix server start. We also need to edit the time zone PHP parameter in the zabbix.conf file, otherwise the installation will not complete. Open the config file. It's located at etc httpd conf.d and then zabbix.conf. We are looking for the time zone entry. Uncomment this entry and add your own time zone. I'm in South Africa, so mine will be Africa forward slash Johannesburg. You can find your time zone at the link displayed on screen now. Once changed, you can save and exit the file. And finally start the HTTP service. You can see here I use the service httpd start command and it will just redirect you to the systemctl start command. We need to ensure that all the services will start when we reboot the server. We will use the systemctl command for this. We want Apache web server, MySQL, Zabbix server and Zabbix client to start up when we reboot. So we will use systemctl enable httpd.service systemctl enable mariadb.service zabbix-server.service and finally zabbix-agent.service Okay, we are all done with the configuration. We can now switch to our browser to complete the Zabbix installation. So open your favorite web browser and navigate to your server IP address forge slash Zabbix. This will automatically redirect you to the Zabbix setup screen if everything went well. Let's click on the next step which will bring us the prerequisite screen. If you are on a clean CentOS installation, you should not see any issues here and you can continue to the next step. Enter the database details which you used when creating the database. Then click next. If you enter the correct details, you will now see the Zabbix server details screen. You can leave everything as default or change the port if you do not want to use the default one. For now, I will leave this as is and click next which will bring us to the pre-installation summary. Verify the settings, then click next step to complete the installation. Installation is normally very quick and you should see the congratulations screen once this is done. Just click finish after which you will be redirected to the login screen. The default login is admin and Zabbix. I recommend that you change this immediately once you are logged in. 
for the first time, which you can do via the profile icon in the top right corner. That's it for the installation. In part 2 of the series, I will give you an overview of the Zabbix web interface. Cheers for now. Do you enjoy my video tutorials? You can get more by subscribing to my YouTube channel, visiting my website at techbyluni.com or following me on Twitter at techbyluni.